name is Constant Kafer. Um, I'm going to talk about no, uh, writing Node.js extensions with C++ and the V8 API. You can find me on GitHub and Twitter um, under the username of kkafer. So um, I work for, um, oh yeah, this is the page I want to show you. I work for a development seat. Uh, we're a small shop based in DC and we do mapping stuff. Our product is called Mapbox and it allows you to create maps. We have Tile Mill, which is like a map design application. You can change the color here um, to basically create your own maps. Um, I'm going to talk about C++ um, and how you can use it to uh, write node extensions. So we all know that C++ is faster than JavaScript, right? That's what we learned at school, right? Anyone agrees with that? The question is, is it really faster? And turns out the V8 guys did a really great job at making uh, JavaScript run very fast. And I did a little experiment to really find out whether it actually makes sense to uh, write C++ extensions for Node. And if you can do what you want to do at all in JavaScript, you should probably do it in JavaScript because it's probably going to be faster. Um, not always, but most of the time. The reason for this is that crossing the boundary between JavaScript and C++ is very slow, and V8 compiles uh, the JavaScript code you write into uh, native bytecode that it's usually faster to execute than like just running your unoptimized C++ code. So um, for my little test, I used this uh, functions, which is the formula for calculating the answer uh, to everything. And so when I write this in native chance and execute, I get about 80 million calls per second on my uh, crappy three-year-old laptop. Um, and it's pretty fast, right? Um, if I write the same thing in uh, V8 as a node extension, I only get 13 million code, uh, calls per second, which is a lot slower. Um, if I do this asynchronously, like if I pass a callback function uh, to my V8, function written in C++, I only get 1.7. And if I go through the thread pool, like uh, offload the calculation to another thread, if you will, um, it's really slow. So uh, if, like, if what you want to do, that's, like, you can write it in JavaScript if, if you can do that. Um, otherwise, um, I'm going to like, talk to you about uh, how you can do it in C++. So why would you do C++ if you can write JavaScript? So there are a few reasons here. Um, the biggest reason is V8 is written in C++, so you kind of have to write C++ to write node extensions. But why do you want to write node extensions at, at all? So pretty much the only reason for doing that is to wrap existing C++ libraries, right? You don't want to reinvent the wheel. Like someone else has probably spent a lot of time um, an effort to build existing libraries like SQLite, like CLIP, you don't want to really implement that again in JavaScript. And uh, maybe one of the biggest reasons is JavaScript is single-threaded uh, single pretty much. So if you have this big, beautiful eight-core machine that you want to use um, and you run like JavaScript code or just JavaScript code on it, you can't really use more than one processor or one core at a time. So by offloading work into another thread, uh, you can use more of the CPU. So this is actually all there is to writing a C++ module for Node. This is all, all the code you have to write to uh, be able to uh, get started. So there are a few things here. You have to include the header files, of course. Um, you have a register module function. You can really name that any way you want. I just like use that name. And you register your module, or like the register function with node by using the node module macro. Um, and use this boilerplate code to compile it, just like save it as W script in the same directory, and you're good to go. So um, if you want to follow along, you can go to github.com slash kkfer slash node cpp modules, which is all the sample code, and it 
contains a lot more comments as well, so you can like go back there later uh, if you want to check that out. Anyway, so let's compile this. Um, Compiling is pretty easy with Node. You just type node waf uh, configure, and it configures all your stuff. And uh, to actually compile it, um, you run the same thing with build, or nothing at all. And it compiles and links your module and saves it as a build slash release slash module name dot node, or whatever you named it in your W script file. So um, let's run this code. Like, this is just the nine lines of code that I've showed you um, on this slide. This is all we compiled now. So, um, you can just require this module like any other node module, and um, what you'll get back is an empty object. That's all there is. There's nothing, you can do nothing with that object. You could have done this in JavaScript, right? Um, but uh, we'll get to some more examples in a bit. So, a few general recommendations uh, for developing. I recommend using CLang. Uh, that makes it a lot easier because CLang has uh, easier to comprehend error messages than uh, GCC. But um, you should also compile your stuff or test your stuff with GCC because many systems, many users uh, still use GCC. They don't have CLang installed. And if you publish your module in NPM, uh, most of the people who will download and install your module will probably use GCC. Um, right, so let's get to some more um, interesting examples. To like, create a function in JavaScript or in C++ that you can access from JavaScript, you just like define a regular C function or C++ function. And there are a few things here. Um, it returns a handle. Uh, a handle is like basically a uh, wrapper around uh, some sort of value. Um, it takes arcs or arguments, which is pretty much the same thing as the arcs, arguments, objects that you get in JavaScript functions as well. And there are a few things that are new here. So in line four, we have the handle scope. Um, the handle scope is basically sort of a safeguard that keeps track of all the handles that you create, of all the variables that you create in this C++ function, and cleans them up afterwards. So you don't leak any of the, uh, any of the variables that you create. And um, when you want to return uh, stuff, you don't want uh, V8 to clean that up because like, the JavaScript that expects the return value still wants to use this, right? So uh, you want to make sure that it doesn't get cleaned up. And the way you do this is uh, call scope.close around this and return the result of that. So um, we still have to register that function that we defined with our node module. And in the register module function, we just call the macro node set method and just like use an arbitrary name that we want to and uh, use our function name. And that's pretty much it. And um, the target parameter of the register module function is pretty much the same as the exports object uh, that you have in native JavaScript uh, modules. So you can just uh, add stuff to that, uh, to that object, and it'll show up in the C++ extension when you require it. So let's compile this. Um, uh, compiling works the same way as uh, before uh, with NodeWeb configure, NodeWeb build. And when we require this, uh, we see the function as expected, right? Okay, we can call this and we get the return value uh, that we defined in the function. So accepting arguments um, is not that complicated either. Uh, usually it's a good idea to check that you actually, like, the user actually passed arguments to that function. Um, similar to the JavaScript arguments objects, we also have a dot length function, or a dot length, um, a way to find out the number of arguments. And we can throw exceptions. Um, and uh, yeah, just like return, create a new error object uh, exception that type error is basically the same as new error, 
in JavaScript to create new JavaScript strings, we use string.new. And um, that way, the user will get a uh, JavaScript ex uh, exception when, um, when they try to call that function without an argument. So once you're past that check and the user actually parsed an argument, we can convert that to integer. And there are a bunch of uh, two functions that you can use to convert the stuff, uh, convert the variable the, uh, the user passed to any um, to a particular type that you want to work with or that you expect. So let's look at the, um, at the documentation, the V8 documentation. And uh, we kind of see the uh, data type tree here. So this is pretty much the same things that you know from JavaScript because we're, after all, writing JavaScript code just in C++. Um, we have an array, we have date, we have this weird things like the Boolean object. So uh, I'm sure most of you know that there are like Booleans and actual objects which are not type of Boolean. Um, and with strings, numbers, um, we can go down there. And uh, the interesting part is that the C++ API, the V8 C++ API actually has several number types as opposed to JavaScript where you only have a number. Uh, V8 actually supports like uh, native integers, um, which are a subclass of the number type. So that's just something to be aware of. Mm, okay, let's get. Okay, so uh, when you do when you want to run stuff asynchronously, you usually accept a callback uh, function that you call when you are finished writing your work. And the way to do this is uh, to check whether it's a function and cast this to a function. Basically, um, very similar to what we did before when we casted it or converted it to an integer. Um, then we just do our stuff, our calculations, and see, or calling out to some C libraries or C++ libraries. And uh, when you had an error, this is just node convention, um, but it's probably a pretty good idea to follow it because most users are familiar with that convention, is that the first uh, argument to their callback is an error object if an error occurred, otherwise it's null. So when no error occurred, we just create null for the first argument. When an error occurred, we uh, create a new exception object and pass that as the only argument, right? So we call the callback function with one argument here and uh, with two arguments and the second argument being the result. Uh, you might have noticed that we don't use scope.close here. Um, and there are a few things that you can return from C++ functions uh, or from V8 C++ functions uh, that you don't have to wrap in scope.close. Those are undefined, null, uh, true and false. I'm not sure whether there are more, but at least these you can just return without wrapping them in scope.close. So, um, oh, and one thing, uh, when you call a function, you don't have to somehow make sure that the handles will stay around because the call function automatically makes sure that uh, V8 doesn't garbage collect or destroy them any other way before um, before the call function you're calling returned. So, oh, and one thing, um, you really don't want to forget the um, handle scope at the top. Um, that's a pretty important piece. If you don't uh, add that, uh, you'll run into troubles and like your code starts or your module starts to behave uh, in a very, very weird way and um, uh, you'll run into hard debug errors. So make sure that you always have the handle scope. But uh, most of the stuff we did so far is serial, right? We just implemented the same stuff that we could have done in JavaScript and C++. Um, let's do some stuff asynchronously. Um, because like, even if we just like, call the function here, this is still synchronous. Like the original call to the callback function blocked until our stuff is done. So Node has a thread pool that we can use to offload work into other threads. And the way this works is uh, we have one main thread, the V8 thread, uh, which is running all the JavaScript code. 
and node spawns a couple of worker threads um, that you can dispatch work requests to. Uh, to do this, um, you have to create three functions. The original function, uh, which takes all the arguments and con converts it to uh, native POD uh, types or some other C++ types that are independent of V8. Um, then it dispatches that to the worker function, which runs in, in another uh, thread. And afterwards, when you're done, when the worker function, which is a blocking function, returns, uh, you can convert that back and call your original callback. So, like I said, it's single-threaded. Um, that's why it's a pretty good idea to do any kind of I.O. and CPU or heavy CPU usage in the uh, worker thread function. So you uh, basically have all the main thread, like for plain JavaScript functions, for accepting server connections and handling all the uh, glue code kind of work. Um, that's a pretty important uh, bit. Uh, you should not ever access any V8 uh, variables, any kind of handles from the worker functions. If you do, uh, your program is probably going to crash sooner rather than later. So um, we still want to get our data that we pass into the original function to the worker thread. The way we uh, can do this is to just create a struct or class or whatever uh, you want to do. Uh, like the convention here is to call it batten, um, but you can really use any other kind of name, or you can also use just like pass a arbitrary pointer, uh, whatever you come up with. Um, but I found that this works pretty well, and uh, you can do most things uh, with it, and it's a pretty good template. So we have a few things here. The work request um, allows you to dispatch the um, call to another thread. Uh, we have the callback function that we want to keep around so that we can call the callback function later once we're done with the work. And this is just some error tracking code, so uh, when our uh, worker function fails, we can store those error messages or the error, error, code, error codes here and then create an uh, error object when we're back in the main V8 thread to give the user some information. So um, like I said, this is just a convention. You can use any other kind of scheme that you come up with. Um, one important piece is the persistent handle. Uh, regular handles are uh, not persistent. They're cleaned up by the handle scope when you exit the function. But we don't want our callback function to be cleaned up because we want to use it later on again to call um, the user with the results of our stuff, right? So uh, this is why we use the persistent type of, of the handle. So. Um, this is basically how starting a, uh, starting a worker process or a worker thread uh, looks like. So you just check that we have a function here and convert it to a function handle and uh, create a new button uh, doing some setup work and create a new persistent handle so that VA doesn't clean this up and just enqueue the uh, work request uh, into the libuv queue. And we pass two function names. Uh, this is async work, this is our worker function, and this is the after function, which uh, is called once the async work function returns. So the worker function is pretty, pretty easy, uh, or, or looks pretty um, uh, lightweight, actually. So you just um, convert the data which is like a reference or a pointer to the button. And you can basically do any kind of work here. What you can do is uh, use any V8 stuff. So you have to convert any kind of data that you pass into the worker thread in the uh, first function to some, uh, some sort of native type. Um, so this function is blocking, so you can basically do whatever you want. You can do long running. Um, network connections, you can do file access, you can do expensive calculations, and it won't block the main V8 uh, thread. Like I said, don't 
don't, don't use any V8 stuff in there. Okay, so once you're done, libuv, uh, make sure to call your after function. Um, you do the same thing, this time with a handle scope because this is executed back in the main thread. And do the same thing, uh, check whether we had an error. And uh, when we did, just call the callback with an error object or exception object. Otherwise, uh, we'll pass the result back. Um, this is what you also have to do uh, because we created a persistent handle of the callback before, we have to manually dispose of it uh, to make sure that, that it's cleaned up and just like delete our, uh, delete our object. So, yeah, okay. Uh, one thing that you have to be aware of is uh, when you call callback functions in, in an after function that returns from libgv, it's called the top of the event loop, of nodes event loop. So uh, this time you have to wrap it in a C++ try catch or like a V8 try catch um, so that it's possible for modules to use uh, process on uncaught exception uh, in the case the callback function fails. So some, some words on, on API design. The problem is that uh, most of the time you want to convert a synchronous API that is implemented in C or C++ into some sort of async uh, uh, way so they can use it from JavaScript. Um, there are some patterns that you can use here. Uh, the event emitter pattern um, is sometimes pretty useful. Um, when you can fit, your, uh, fit the API, the original API, into uh, the event emitter pattern, that's a pretty good way to go. Chainable calls, like jQuery, are um, often a very useful thing to do. And when you do this, you can like, manually queue the work requests in your original thread before you dispatch them to the thread pool. Um, and I'll show you an example for that in a bit. Um, some previous or, or some examples basically create objects with new for uh, any kind of things. Um, you can also just create a native function or a, like a plain function. You don't have to wrap it in an object. Um, so if it's just a simple API call, uh, just like write a simple function. It doesn't have to be complicated. And this is probably the uh, most important bit of advice make it very hard to misuse. So JavaScript programmers usually expect that like, their program doesn't crash randomly, so, or that they have to like, call things in a specific order. So, um, and, C, and C and C++ APIs are different, so your program can crash if you don't use the C++ or C API in the correct order. Uh, so your code should make sure that it's impossible that the program will crash. And, and even if you misuse it, uh, just throw errors as opposed to crashing. Um, and yeah, just like uh, make it feel as JavaScript as possible. That's um, what I usually do when starting to write a node extension is I just like open up my editor and come up with an API uh, or like write some JavaScript code that should be the API and then see how I can implement it in uh, V8 or Node C++ code so that it uh, looks like a good API. Um, some examples for this uh, to like show you what I'm talking about is the uh, Node SQLite 3 API. Uh, to create a new database object, you just call the new operator on it. You, there's no open function or anything because when you create a new database object, like open is pretty much implicit. You like don't want to open it separately. Um, that eliminates a few, a few like things you have to check for. Like you don't have to check when you run a query. Oh, has the user already called open because um, it's already open implicitly, and all of those uh, requests are queued so that they're always executed after uh, the database is actually open. Um, yeah, and there's also no need to close the database handle because once the uh, once, the, once we ate garbage collects the DB object here, uh, we automatically close the database handle. So the user doesn't have to call close manually. 
Um, and uh, one other thing that I implemented here is if you don't pass a callback function like in this example, and the query can still fail, right? Um, and in that case, uh, I just submit an error event on the database object. So a node has some code in there that automatically like throws errors when there is an uncaught error object on some other object. So uh, that way, like you can still catch those. Um, another uh, example is Node Blend, which is a module that uh, just blends together two images. And we don't have to like create a new operator here. We just call the function with two buffers and we get a buffer back. So there's no need to instantiate anything here. Um, like we don't need any states, so there's no like very splend states, so we just like take images and blend them together. Um, there's some more documentation at these links here. And um, yeah, uh, check out the GitHub repository. Uh, there are a lot more comments in there. There's also some samples for uh, creating objects in there, like the new operator. And yeah, thanks to um, M. Ralev and Isaacs and Orlando for, uh, for some of the examples that I used and some of their modules. And yeah, any questions? Like, as opposed to using run and get? Yeah. Um, I did consider that. The reason uh, uh, there are different methods is that uh, sometimes you like, just don't care about the result. You don't have to like, step over the result object. So when you don't care about the result, you just use run. If you want to get just a single value, you can use get. Um, and there are some more methods as well that are described on, on the module website. So that's the reason for it. Um, you can also just always use dot, dot all or dot get. Um, uh, there's no uh, like no damage in that. Okay, thanks. <laughs>